everybody this is steve on the guru bro this is our second question and answer show called ask a tech if you have a computer related question that you'd like me to answer head on over to the guru brew show.com website click on the ask a tech link leave me your question and perhaps we'll use it on an upcoming video show so without further ado let's get answering the questions Okay, well, this first question is from Carol, and it's titled, Maintaining My Computer. What should I do on a regular basis to keep my computer running up to speed? When I first read your question, I almost answered it in the typical way that you might have heard others talk about. Such thing as uh, defragging, running scan disk, cleaning up files and folders, emptying out your cache and your trash, and those sort of answers. And then I got thinking about what I do for preventive maintenance. And really, I don't really have a routine of maintenance at all. What I do is just operate my computer with some basic guidelines that keep my machine free of junk that would slow me down over time. A good example is programs that you may install. I want to show you this program that I downloaded. I'm going to open it up and start to install it to show you what I mean. Now this is typical of a program that would be free to download and um, you know a lot everybody downloads free stuff now and then but the trick is to pay attention to what the page is telling you in the install to make sure that you're not getting other junk that you don't want. So this is a YTD video downloader and I'm reading down through it and it just tells me about it and the privacy policy and that sort of thing. Let me go ahead and click next. Now you can see that it's ready to go again and most people would probably just click next, next, next and then finish, right? Without reading anything. And especially with free programs, that's the worst thing you can do because look up here at the top, express install is, is highlighted and if I take that default and just hit next it's not going to ask me anything else it's just going to go ahead and install that but it's going to install extensions it's going to install new tabs amazon shopping slick savings more amazon stuff it's going to set my default search engine to yahoo and new page tabs so a whole bunch of junk that I didn't want. So to make it so it doesn't do that, you must click this install, this custom install here. Okay, now look down here, this same junk is checked. And even if I clicked custom install and hit next, I'm still gonna get that like Yahoo and it's gonna change my default search engine. So I have to come in and click all these little check marks off before I click the next bar. Otherwise, I'm gonna get that junk in there. And this stuff over time builds up really quick. And especially like the toolbars, they can really slow down your web browsing. And this is one thing that you can do by paying attention to how you're installing programs as preventive maintenance. It's kind of like real-time maintenance rather than picking a, a week or a day to do it. And that's typically how I run my machines. Another thing, which is obvious, is to keep good organization of, of your files and your folders. Put things in folders so you know where they are and what they're called. And throw away things that you don't need. Uh, go into the add remove programs and uninstall programs that you don't normally use. Now, in the event that your computer does start slowing down, there are other things that you can do to uh, um, remove those programs, but I'm not going to cover that in this question. But the real answer, rather than going with the traditional answer, is um, 
pay attention to what you're doing and what you're installing. And of course, the number one thing that you should be doing is always be prepared for a crash, a total disaster. Back up your folders and your files weekly and just use good common sense computing practices. That's the number one thing you can do. Okay, so thank you for the question. On with the next. Okay, you guys are coming up with some pretty good questions, so thank you for that. We're going to go on to question number two. This is from Justin, titled Inspiring IT. What do employers look for in an IT? Do they value experience or the certifications more, from your point of view, of course? Well, the answer is both. They're going to want to see your certifications and then when you get in the job role the team leader is going to want to see your performance now if i had to pick one i would say your certifications are most important because if you can't get past the front door or past the hr director you're not going to be in the role to prove yourself either way um, certainly when in the position the uh, experience is going to be more valuable but uh, keep in mind when you're being hired the HR director is looking for certain qualifications and the only way that she can tell from the candidates who's qualified and who's not is generally by the correct certifications so that's my answer certs will get you in the door and experience will get you along with the team leader so i hope that helps justin sorry there's no definitive answer but if i had to pick one i would say certifications get your certification thanks all right let's go on this is question number three from john the title is forgot password how do I bypass a user password on a Lenovo ThinkPad Edge with Windows 7 Professional? Okay, John, um, I did a video on this very subject and you can look in my YouTube library of videos. And this is the page here. And I describe in detail how you can make a bootable flash drive that allows you to blank out a Windows password so that you can gain access. And so I'm just going to refer you to this video. Now, if your machine does not boot from USB, some machines do not, especially the older ones, you can also make a CD, which will do the same thing. And that pogostick.net website that I send you to, to make the software, they have both versions, the CD as well as USB. So look for that. Now, I noticed on this video, this, is, this was published in, on February 11th of 2013. There's 488,000 views on this video. And that tells me one thing, that there's probably about that many people that forgot their password. That's unbelievable to me. Um, so it happens to a lot of people. And I just wanted to add something in here. Um, I have seen, and I've, I've said it in the comments before many, many times, that um, if this tool does not work, it's possible that your user account is corrupt. And I've seen this before where you're putting in your password to your Windows login, and it's not taking it and saying it's wrong. And then, you know, the user thinks that they forgot their password or it isn't right or whatever and what could be going on especially if this tool doesn't work is the um, the account is corrupt so the only thing that you can really do is blank out the password and then log in as a different user like as a um, administrator change the um, user account over and move your files over and delete the old account um, so anyway I won't get into that right now I don't think that's your problem but anyway I just wanted to let you know go to this uh, how to remove Windows user login password found in my YouTube library and it'll tell you all about how to do it works with all versions of Windows so 
Thanks for your question, John. Question four is from George, titled Audio, Headset, and Sound. I've been having problems with my laptop. It's a Dell Inspiron. It has Windows 7 on it. When I play games or other applications, it does not play through my headset. I am pretty sure it's my computer because I've tried various headsets. Can you help me? All right. Um, you didn't say if the audio is working through the speaker. So that's the, my first question is if your headset's not plugged in, is the audio coming through the speaker? Um, if it is not, then chances are you just have a driver problem and you can reinstall your drivers by going to the start menu and typing in device manager. Look on down through the device manager list till you come to the sound and video here. And what you're gonna wanna do is click on the driver, the audio device driver and uninstall it and then restart your computer and it will reinstall that audio driver for you. You're looking for a clean bill of health. If there is a yellow explanation point next to any of these, then you have audio troubles. However, if you're getting sound through your regular speakers, it's probably not this. The next easiest thing that I would check is down here on the volume. You want to right click on the little speaker and go to playback devices here and make sure that none of these are muted because you can uh, you know you can mute them if you want and uh, you want to make sure that they're all enabled now chances are because it's a laptop it's going to be the actual power jack and i'm guessing that's probably what your problem is because i've seen a lot of them like that so once you've checked all these other things, the easy things, of course, it's probably going to be this, but um, check these other things first. Now, I do have a video on how to replace these, and you can look that up in my library. And they're usually modular. And you can see this one is just a little board that has a plug-in wire. So if you're comfortable with taking apart your laptop, you might want to try it yourself. And generally, you can get these connections online, like at Amazon, for around $20. Otherwise, if you're not comfortable taking apart a laptop, you're going to have to take it to a shop, and they're probably going to charge you, um, I would say, at least $100 to change this out. So I'm sorry, it's not good news. But you never know. It could be just a simple thing like your mute is on my question to you is is it working through the speakers and if it is then start looking for um, the driver problems and um, then finally the only other thing it could really be is this jack to be honest with you if it's coming up through the speakers so thanks for your question george i hope you get your laptop worked out all right moving right along this is question five from tony the title is Pan Tilt Camera. Hey Steve, I really appreciate your clear explanation. I have a question about your Pan Tilt Camera Mount. Do I have the files that I modified for the web access to the Pi? He's trying to make a Raspberry Pan Tilt Pic Cam using the camera card. It's a great camera for putting out Full HD for $29. I need to connect the Pi to the web via PHP script. I saw your video and it's exactly what would work for this project. I would really appreciate if you could send me the modified Python and PHP files. All right, Tony, yeah, we have those uh, files and I'll share them with you. However, you can't get mad at me once you get them. Um, what I'm talking about here is we put this together very quickly. And I'm going to go ahead and open the files and give you a little explanation. It consists of many camera modules, and I'll send all of them to you. My son did the Python script. He modified some Adafruit code, and then I wrote the PHP scripts to work with them later. 
So what we ended up with is this collage of files. It actually works really good, but uh, it might be confusing for someone that's trying to replicate this. Let me give you a few tips what to look for. Inside this Adafruit folder, you'll find a bunch of files. And these are the positions for the cameras written in Python that my son modified. Let me open this down one and give you an example. You're going to have to come in here and modify all the directory listings or move the files to these exact file locations that we've listed. Each one of these files contains one, um, there's another one, two, I can see three different places, maybe four, yeah, four. Four different places that reference directories. So either put the files in these exact directories or change the directory names. That's going to be the first task that you're going to have to do. And you're going to have to do it for all these up, right, left, down, and centers. These two files, number one and two, are text files. And if open, you'll see that it contains a number. We didn't use a database to reference the position of the servos. We actually used just a text file. So these, this file, this text file one and two are references for the actual servo positions. You can see that this um, servo was last used at position 375. So leave those files in there, but make sure that they both have write and read access to the web um, to make changes to reference the servos. Otherwise, it's not going to know its position, so make sure you do that. Let's go back to the PHP scripts that I wrote now. There's two of them. There's one called camera and one called pan. You're going to have to make sure that you put both of them in the same directory because that's how they're set up. You'll be calling this camera from the web browser to execute the PHP script. And then the other one, the, um, the pan, will be called upon by the script itself. Anyway, inside this camera, you can see that there's other references um, in the HTML code. You can see it goes um, right to pan PHP. So if that's in your root, you won't have a problem. Otherwise, you're going to have to reference the directory in front of this. That's all to be said about that one. Let me open up the pan and make sure that that's okay. So there are full references to directories here. And you're going to have to either change these or just put the files to the Adafruit Python code. Um, where I've got them here. So, good luck with that. Um, I'm sorry it's a mess. I know it is. And um, it really wasn't meant to be shared. But if you can use the script, I'll go ahead and send it to you. I have your email address, so I'll send you the link where you can pick up all these files. And good luck to you. Let me know how it works out for you, Tony. Thanks for the question. Look for this file soon coming your way. On to the next. All right, this is question six from Cameron. The title is Windows 7's running slowly. My friend gave me a Toshiba satellite to see if I could make it stop locking up and run faster. She does not want me to do a factory reset and the computer is running very slow and freezes often. Even when using extremely light applications like Notepad, I thought it was a virus and I did multiple scans with different programs and there wasn't a single threat found. I thought it might be a hardware failure as I looked over the computer logs because it seems it's having trouble accessing some files from the hard drive every once in a while. But I don't think it's a hard drive problem but I can't say for sure because the laptop froze while doing a, a, a hard drive health check. Any ideas of what's going on? All right, Cameron, yeah, you got to make sure it's not the hardware first. And that's my first idea is you need to check that. You could launch into BIOS, you know, using your F, I think it's F1 or F2 for Toshiba, and go into the BIOS and play with some of the applications there. They do have probably a health checker, something along that lines. You can just make the computer run for a while. 
and see if you get any hard disk errors or lockups. If you have problems in BIOS, then you can rule out Windows, you know, the operating system as being a problem. However, if you can't get it to lock up, the next step would be to go ahead and launch safe mode using F8. Load the computer up and play with it there. While you're in safe mode, I would run a scan disk for sure, a full, and you know, have it set to fix any hard drive problems. Also, you could go into MS config and turn off all startup applications as well as services and see how that works for you. Because she doesn't want you to restore the computer, these are a few things that you can do. If that still fails and you're pretty sure it's not the hard drive after doing the scan disk and that passes, you're going to have to talk her into doing the, uh, you know, the um, system restore. As long as you back up her files and settings, she should be fine with that. I mean, it's better than buying a new computer. I mean, your time's worth something, so you can't, you could spend days and days trying to find problems like this to repair the operating system or hard disk problems. So again, if scan disk passes, it's probably the operating system and, uh, you know, perhaps turning off the services and uh, the startup programs will help. So I hope there were some tips in there that will help you out trying to figure that out, Cameron. Thanks for the question. On to the next. All right, next question is from Jim. The title's Xbox controller for the CNC. A lot of questions on controlling the CNC with the Xbox controller. A lot of interest. Says, you have a great video on hooking up the Xbox controller for Mach 3. I went through a couple controllers. They're all third-party units. In the remarks, there's an explanation on how to change the settings to make it work. But I still can't figure it out. wonder if you could help explain it. Thank you. So, yeah, um, let's go to that video that I have. All right, so this is how to use the Xbox 360 controller with Mach 3. And I started out with a generic controller, and many others did too. And that plug-in just doesn't work well with generics. I recommend the genuine Mach 3 or um, Xbox controller. There's just something about the generics. But... Looking on down through the uh, comments on this video, there is one here from Ktrout171, it looks like, 117i maybe. And he says he also had the same problem with using third-party controllers, but in the end it worked. And then he goes on to tell how he fixed it. And I read through what he had said, and I think, yeah, he did get lucky. Um, but perhaps the difference is he used that Shillings um, uh, extension, the plug-in. Let's go to the Newfangled Solutions website, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the plugins page, and we're going to go down to the Xbox controller. And this is the one that I told you to use for the Xbox itself. And this is the Shillings here. So if you follow the video along with the installation, but instead of using the Xbox 360 controller download, you use this Shillings one, perhaps it will work. I think that's um, what he's saying here. He says he actually installed Shillings and then uninstalled it and then installed the other one. So I'm not sure what that did. Um, but uh, perhaps he got something out of that shillings. So if it were me, I would go ahead and try the shillings in replace of the Xbox controller driver and see how that works for you. You know, you can go on eBay right now and pick up these genuine Xbox controllers for 20 bucks all day long and it'll instantly work. So I wouldn't spend too much time on this, Jim. I'm with you. I like things to work that I already have, and I fully understand that. But uh, there's too many other comments here of people having problems with the third parties. So try the shillings, and if it doesn't work, 
and you can follow his steps if you want to, but I think there was a little luck involved with that. And uh, see if it doesn't work, and if it doesn't, just bite the bullet and pay the 15 or 20 bucks and get the right one. All right, Jim. Well, thanks for the question. This is question eight from Chris. This is Ethernet port issue. I have a Toshiba satellite running Windows 8.1, and I recently bought an Ethernet cable to connect my PS3 to a shared network via my laptop. My issue is I have to hold the cable in place at a certain spot for my laptop to recognize it. But when I do place it in, the cable won't click in place. So I'm guessing the locking mechanism in the port is broken. How can I fix this? When I first read this, I was thinking that you were talking about the little clip on the actual Cat5 wire. And, you know, you can, you can cut that end off and get a replacement end and use this tool to put a new one on. But now that I'm reading it closer, it sounds like the actual port I would guess on your on your laptop is bad is what you're saying. I, I'm not real sure if you're talking about the the port on the laptop or the PS3. It sounds like the laptop. Really, if it's the port, you're going to have to get in there and actually physically replace that connection. Um, you're not going to be able to do anything from the outside. Um, now, if you're talking about the, just the cable, I don't think you're talking about the cable in. I think you're talking about the actual port. Yeah, you're going to have to get in there and actually replace that, um, you know, to fix it. There's really nothing you can do from the outside. The only other thing you might want to consider doing is getting an external. Um, I have one somewhere here. It goes into a USB port and it turns it into Ethernet. They sell them online. You can look um, for in eBay. It's a uh, USB to Cat5 adapter and use that rather than fixing your laptop. So I hope this helps. Good luck with it. Thanks for the question. Well, that's all the time we have now for questions. I thank everyone that's participated. And again, if you would like to have your question considered to be answered on a future show, go to the GuruBrewShow.com website and leave us a question in the tech help section of the website. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.